Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome back to Season 2 of Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, which we then use as a springboard for a spirited and lighthearted discussion on whatever the moral or theme of their story is. And it's always short story. I should preface that. So it's never a book. Well, unless I'm reading, then it's no, sometimes it's, a book. No, if you're talking. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But up, up, but up, up. Pink. Regardless, if you enjoyed this show or the past shows, please go hop on to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, whatever you listen to, and leave us a review. It really does help the show, as well as share it with your friends. That's how we grow, and people find us, and other people smirk with us. So that would be great if you could take a second and do that as well. So uh, season two, this is this means that, like we're doing this again. Yep, we're still here. You excited? Yeah. Well, it's palpable. So excited. (laughs) (laughs) I can feel the enthusiasm through your mic. I can feel it. Back by popular demand, we are. Your mom called? (laughs) 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 Well, this week it's my turn, because I didn't tell a story for a while as we ended the season out. But I wanted to tell a story that will lead to a conversation everyone has with their friends or behind closed doors, but nobody wants to really have publicly. Oh, great. So you're coming back with a hot button topic. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a hot button topic. It's more like something that bothers me, and I just want to see what you guys think. Are we going to be it. uncomfortable? No, it's not like, it's not naughty. How many times are we going to call you an old man, do you think? It's it's more something that's irritating. So somebody's on your lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's more like get off my lawn. Exactly. So f- roughly eight. <laughs> eight. Zach, that's the answer you're looking for. Eight. All right, George Carlin, let's let her rip. Okay. And now, it's time for a story. It's Monday morning and Greg already feels defeated. Walking into the office after a weekend away always seems to do a miraculous job of sucking a life force straight out of his being. Thankfully, Greg is the guy who can control his mindset. Therefore... As he sits down with his freshly filled coffee cup, he is able to immediately alter his posture and demeanor. This is going to be a great week, he convinces himself. Fifteen minutes of uninterrupted TPS report typing flies by when Jim knocks on Greg's office door. As soon as Greg catches his eye, he knows this is not going to be a short visit. Grego! How was the weekend? Jim started off as if he cared about Greg's relaxation time. He can't even seem to care about how much he loathes the name Grego. Not bad. Spent time with the family. Disconnected and low-key. My kind of weekend. You? Greg asked with gritted teeth. Not bad. Took my son to the football game. Caught a few of those ungrateful divas taking a knee again instead of standing up like a real American. Just when you thought they were done with that nonsense, right? Jim asked, as if Greg had any interest in this debate for another five hours. Well, people feel how they're going to feel, Jim. That kneeling did spark the NFL to start their Inspire Change initiative. So that's a plus. Still a good game, though, right? Greg just wanted this conversation to end. It was, but that whole kneeling thing gets on my last nerve. By the end of the third quarter, I was so sick of their self-righteousness that I grabbed Billy and hit the parking lot. The president was right to call them out. You know what I mean? Again, Jim waited for an opening to engage in yet another long-winded debate. To each their own, Jim. Just glad you guys had fun. I don't mean to be short, but I've got to get these reports done, so we'll catch up later. Greg had work to do, yes but he also needed a breather before listening to this rhetoric for too long. Wednesday. Week is flying by and Greg is ahead of schedule. A knock on his door and he looks up to see Amy, Greg's receptionist, waiting patiently. Come on in, Amy. Amy takes a seat before she begins. Hey, Greg, Mr. Phillips from the IRS called. They'll be a little delayed with the company's scheduled audit due to the government shutdown. He wanted me to let you know. No problem, Amy. I expected that. We'll keep up to date and be prepared for when things reopen. Greg turned back to typing before noticing Amy remained seated. Everything okay? he asked. Not really, Greg. I mean, this is getting stupid. How long is the government going to be shut down for? Just because Cheeto Jesus wants a wall doesn't mean people shouldn't be getting paid. You know what I mean? The redness in Amy's face was swelling as her approach became more heated. Greg sat in his chair, speechless. He respected Amy, but these are conversations he knew better than to wade into. Especially at work. 
He contemplated for a moment, then looked her in the eye. Amy, I honestly don't know. I feel both sides are locking horns on this one. It's become an ego-pissing contest for both parties, and good people with no real say are doing the suffering. You seem pretty passionate about it, so I'd recommend getting involved over the next election cycle. Maybe the world needs to hear your passion. Right now, I need to get back to my reports. Let Mr. Phillips know the delay will be fine. Amy nodded, picked herself up, and exited the office. Greg took a long pause, sighed, and went back to work. Friday night. Greg made it through the week. Yes! He sat in his car after walking out for a solid ten minutes, reflecting on the insanely hectic week he had just endured. Doing what all modern folk do at all times like this, he immediately updated his Facebook status. Another week in the books. Let the weekend festivities begin. Greg continued to relax for a few minutes, pondering what stress-relieving debauchery he could endure this weekend when he received a Facebook notification. His old friend Jacob already replied to his status. Maybe Jacob wants to meet up for a couple rounds this weekend, Greg thought. Then he read the comment. Try to enjoy your amazing weekend while thousands of government workers wonder how they will feed their families. Hashtag selfish. Greg stared at the comment for five solid minutes. He began typing responses and deleting them almost immediately as fast. Then... Another notification, this time from Jenny. Hey, Jacob, maybe if they'd agree to the pittance he wants for the wall instead of haggling over their hatred for the guy, we could get some things done. He was elected, you know. He won. Are you guys ever going to accept it? Greg just stared at his phone. He hadn't even left the parking lot yet, and this is what he's again dealing with. Greg thought carefully for a moment, took another heavy sigh, and deleted his status. Looks like Greg is spending another weekend offline. Hey, Grego. <laughs> you like that? That's a catchy little name. I think we should all have little yeah. nicknames. No. That's a, if you're nicknaming people Grego, you're the worst person. You are. You, you are, are the awful. problem. <laughs> with, with society as yep. a whole. So what do you think the moral of my story is? Negativity. <laughs> okay, that could be a moral uh, or a theme. Politics has become way too pervasive. Very close. The The moral is people are tired of hearing about politics. You would think so. Apparently not. That's all anyone <laughs> talks about. Yeah, that's what you would think. But the truth is, I think we're all sick of hearing about it, aren't we? Like in every single conversation, it ends up going back to that or turning to that or leading to that. There's always, you know, we all have those friends that have to chime in with their opinions over every situation without ever hearing yours. I mean, that's everywhere. It is pervasive. I don't think that it's necessarily people are tired of politics because they still care. They're just tired of where the conversations inevitably inevitably will lead. At this point, if you disagree with somebody, you can both understand that most likely this conversation is not going to come to any resolve where one person's like, I can see your perspective. So it's just kind of like, I don't really want to hear you complain and not listen to me at all, or you listen to me and not actually listen to what I have to say. So I think that's more the issue with politics rather than the actual, like the topics in politics. That people just can't listen. They're just just tired of knowing where it's going to go. And it's like, why am I going to waste my time having this conversation when I already know where this person is? I already know that they're not going to agree with me, especially the last few years. It seems like it's gotten even more politically divided. So everybody's talking. Nobody's saying anything. Yeah, Yeah, it's opinion vomit. And it's just, yeah, no one's actually interested in having a conversation. They're just interested in shouting about how good a person they are. <laughs> I feel like people want to converse about politics, but nobody wants to listen to anyone else's thoughts on it or facts on it or anything. It just it just feels like I have my opinion. Anything you say doesn't matter. So that to me, that that's not a conversation. It's it stops being a conversation when you cease listening to the other person. Is the way I understand it. You guys agree with that? Yeah, I try to stay so far out of this, man, that <laughs> <laughs> it is annoying. It, you can't even you can't even click on an article about a TV show without there being two paragraphs dedicated to its political leanings. Ugh, I try to avoid all of this. I also think that there's more to this issue than people are making it out to be. It's been so heavily debated with so many different people that people stop listening because they've already had the exact same conversation with 12 other people where the exact same arguments come up and neither people want to make any move to understanding each other. So they just kind of turns into an argument 
I don't know. I guess it's just how I. Well, and, and I would I would actually add to when I say poli- for me personally, when I say politics, I don't just mean red and blue. I don't just mean the government. I mean politics to me is anything where it's a divisive issue. There's a lot of political undertones, or maybe even just action and stuff. Okay, I was reading a, a review for a recent movie that came out. This is like a while back, called The Upside with Kevin Hart. You know, and he had all that controversy about him hosting the Oscars because mm-hmm. he, whatever he he had tweets many years back. Hey, good for him. <laughs> you, Sorry. Would, you would say that. So his his comedy was a problem for a lot of people. I was reading a review, a film review. Film criticism should be focused on the film. I believe that one hundred percent. And the first paragraph of the review was just talking about what a horrible person they thought Kevin Hart was and talking mm. about his politics and or talking about the jokes that he made and how they were inappropriate and it was in, you know, political incorrectness doesn't cover it and da 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 da. And I'm reading that and I'm like, I'm sick to death of this kind of thing everywhere I am. And it, you can look at it as negativity. I consider it. I guess political maybe not, isn't even a fair term, but it's, it's more opinion. a social issue. It's opinion. I'm, it I'm tired of negative opinions popping up for everything. If you enjoy something, someone has to come rain on it with their opinion. That's dour. You know, they have to have they have to have the opposite opinion of everything, and a lot of it run falls back to the Trump stuff or the politics or red versus blue. A lot of it comes to, you know, me too. A lot of it comes to current Hollywood. I mean, there's just all kinds of things, but it's just like this generalization of taking a a serious issue and making it your cause for every conversation you have to have. And it becomes just exhausting for people to have a conversation with those people. And it's a minority, but it's a vocal minority. I hope that makes sense. That was kind of like all over the place. I think I pretty much followed what you were saying. There are some people out there who they find an issue and they kind of cling on to it and then they somehow find a way to incorporate it into every conversation even when it doesn't necessarily relate or you know re- revolve around that topic but they're making a way to have that topic. But also that seems to be the way of writing now in journalism where especially whoa, 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 whoa. do not call it journalism in terms of the internet writing and their jobs are as journalists. I'm sorry, Zach, but that's what their titles are. I'm not saying that they're effectively doing their jobs, but they're probably being told to write things that are more clickbaity, that are going to get more attention, that are more controversial. And so they look at what those controversial topics are, what they know people are going to get heated about. I mean, I even see it with my local news. I stopped following my local news station because they will intentionally post something that is politically divisive, not even a social issue divisiveness, just specifically politically. And you can tell that it's just in hope to try to spark some conversation on their social media, which gets them more clicks, more likes, more attention, more, you know, whatever it might be that they're looking for. And it's just a divisive measure. So you do see it a lot more often, especially with that online writing, (laughs) non-journalism. I just I take umbrage with calling those people journalists because they are, yeah, pre- preying on people's fears and you know hot buttons. They're not not actually doing any work. They're just gross, I guess. <laughs> is, that, is that really yeah, how you feel? You feel like journalism is dead, and not in the fake news sense, just in the sense that journalism is dead. Maybe there, you know, there is, there are some actual journalism, but uh, I guess specifically, like I see a lot of entertainment journalism. And boy, nobody's really doing any work over there anymore. It's just, you know, you see a trailer for a movie and you're like, boy, can you believe how sexist specific Rim 2 was in that trailer? No, I can't. It was a robot. <laughs> that robot was was throwing vibes, man. Like those vibes it, were flying and I caught them. And it sucks because everyone, it's mostly just like the same echo chamber of people. So they're not actually listening to any opinions that aren't their their peers who back up their opinions. No one is actually listening to the world. Or facts. Anyway. Or facts. It's just, I, I have ceased lis- listening to and reading mainstream media of any kind. I'm not picking a network, like all of them. When you watch them, it's all opinionated. Everything is, which I'm fine if it's an opinion section. But if your job is to report the news, I don't want to know what you think. I don't care what you think. I really don't care where you stand. You can hate our current administration. You can love our current administration. I just don't care. Your opinion should not be part of that reporting. And as soon as it is, it stops being journalism to me and starts being just opinion vomit. 
That, that's a problem I have. So I've got a couple base questions that I've got. Actually, I've got several. Okay. So get ready. Let's well, get okay. ready. First up, where do, you, where do you guys sit? Are you tired of political talk or do you still enjoy a, a good debate on the political spectrum? I enjoy a good conversation. There's a um, one podcast. I don't want to advertise other podcasts, but there's no, a no. podcast I listen to. <laughs> don't do that. Where, where, where they host who leans conservative has guests on from all over the political spectrum and they have actual conversations that don't devolve into shouting with each other. And that is a very good show, but that is, I feel like the only podcast I can find with that. So they actually convert. It isn't where talking heads eventually start just yelling at each other. Like it seems every other multiple host opinionated show does. No, really? No, it gets, I mean, it, there are certainly, it gets heated, but it's never, it never devolves into a shouting match that, Every news channel seems to produce. They like those, so. don't they? <laughs> this seems to be like the most Somebody popular must. programming that I see anymore. It's infuriating. I'm sick of video game podcasts. And so like, I feel like all the shows, I guess that was very podcast centric for me, but all the stuff I used to listen to that was just fun. has just been slowly creeping more and more into every, everything has a political bent to it. It's infuriating. I have a very, distinctive line between political issues and social issues. I don't mind hearing about social issues. I don't mind hearing people talk about solutions to different social issues. Mm -hmm. But I am getting exhausted with hearing political tribe just because there is no discussion. There's nothing beneficial with debating who your political candidate is or should be because... Regardless, most of them aren't doing anything beneficial <laughs> anyway. That's fair. And none of them are really trying to strive for, or I should say very seldom, a uh, seldom number of them are actually trying to strive to do something for the issues that matter, environmental, social, things like that. Now, that I matter to you. I mean, let's be fair. The things that matter to no, you. No, they're literally not doing anything about any issues. Okay, it's right. just a matter of, I want to be wherever the majority lie. And whatever the majority prefer, that's what my opinion is. That's what my agenda is. It's not a matter of I got elected because or I'm you know, running for as candidacy, candidacy because I have this desire, this agenda to fix this thing. This is my solution. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to implement it. I am willing to hear about other solutions. There aren't candidates like that very often anymore. And so it just becomes my political candidate is better than your political candidate. And it's I choose this one because it's not yours. And to me, that's where you're not having a conversation. You're just choosing the what you believe is the better of the two evils, you're not really having an opinion on what they're doing right or wrong. You're just doing it because that's where your party lies. And that's where I have an issue. I don't want to hear someone have a converse, try to have a conversation with me or guess more of a debate when they don't have their own morals and values in check. They just align with whatever their red or blue is. And that's that's what I'm tired of. But I don't mind hearing the conversation. Like if you believe that whomever you align with, you like them for a particular reason and you believe in what they believe in and you want to tell me those reasons, that's different to me. You know, we can d disagree on what they stand for, but if you have a legitimate reason for backing that candidate, I feel like that's a much more, I'm much more obligated or interested in hearing what you have to say, but most of the time it doesn't seem to be that way anymore. Uh, and that's both sides. I feel like it just ends up becoming who can be louder. You know, let's just keep going uh, decibel by decibel by decibel until eventually the house shakes or the, the building shakes or the office shakes and nobody, people, somebody just walks away. That's the only way that anything happens. Anymore. I don't feel like real conversation happens. I have a couple friends that I can still have a legitimate conversation with. They actually will hear what I have to say. They'll, they'll have, they'll say what they have to say. We can listen to each other. And I'm like, I didn't, I honestly didn't know that. Let me go. Cause I'm still going to research it just cause someone says it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take their word for it. I, I will. I do appreciate what you're saying. Like, hey, you know what? Let me let me look into that. I have not heard that, but I would. I think it's important to always listen to everyone, even if you don't, especially if you don't agree with them, because you should be open to all ideas. There's not enough of that anymore. So, to have an, a thoughtful, engaging debate, you have to be open to those things. And if you're not, then debate ceases, conversation ceases, and that's where I feel like I am currently. 
and I know a lot of other people are, where I just, I just don't even want to talk about politics anymore. I just feel like, why? Because you're not going to listen to anything I have to say. It's all going to, you, you have your opinion made. I would love to have a conversation and give you my two cents and you give me your two cents and we see if we agree on anything else and maybe see where the compromises could be, but nobody wants to get to that point. They just want to, they have their feet in the sand and they don't want to budge. It's red and blue, like you said. If Go you're ahead. not willing to have your opinion challenged, you're not willing to learn and you're not willing to grow. And really, you should just get out of the conversation at all. I agree with that. But your opinion should also be more than just this is what my party aligns with. You know, there's a lot of people who they make their decisions and their defenses and their arguments based off of whatever, you know, if they're Republican or if they're Democrat, they're going to say, well, Republicans believe this, my Republican candidate stands for this, or my Democratic candidate stands for this, so I don't stand for that, that sort of thing. And you're not having, there's no middle ground whatsoever where people are like, you know, I I align with this Republican perspective, but I also align with this Democratic perspective or conservative. You know what I mean? There's just it's so down the line now where you have to be on one side or the other. And if you have any justification or reasoning for both sides, then you get attacked from both sides. And there isn't that there isn't an actual thought process that goes into some people's mm. opinions and decisions on why they feel the way they feel. It's just because this is what my party decides on. And that's where it's frustrating to me to listen to an argument when somebody doesn't actually have, they haven't looked into it. They've just, all they've done is say, okay, this is what my candidate says. Well, so I people, follow that lead. And people have that generalization and everybody has to fall into a red or blue can't. Right. I can't tell you how many times I'm having a conversation. I've had people tell me, oh, you're a Republican or, oh, you're a Democrat. Because I, I do think very differently on certain issues. And it's just like, how do you even make that leap, man? I, I'm actually neither of those. So how do you make that leap? Just because you heard one statement that puts me in a, in a camp? That doesn't make any sense to me. I have one issue and I have an opinion on that issue. Then I take another issue and I'll have an opinion on that issue. I sh you should, as a person, I think, have an opinion on every issue, an individual separate opinion for each issue, which is kind of what you're saying, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's become slanderous, too. If you if someone thinks that you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, then they'll say, oh, you're a Republican or, oh, you're a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes... Fighting words. Yeah, and now it's used, you know, where we would have different slang terms for maybe race or gender or something like that. Now we have these <laughs> political... I don't know what the right word it's is. It's like the political slurs? Like political, the, yeah. It's it's just people it's trying new, to it's slander. The new racism? Yeah, I, obviously not as brutal by any means, but it's becoming very, very uncomfortable where nobody wants to, nobody wants to share their opinion when they're not as black and white on a decision, mm -hmm. on their opinions. But the people who are still yelling and still making arguments are the people who are the ones who are like, well, I believe this and I stand for this because this is my party's decision. And so you're not actually hearing the majority of the people who have substantially researched opinions where they have smart opinions of why they feel the way they feel because they've actually investigated it and they've said, you know, this is beyond more than just a Wikipedia page mm -hmm. and have had actual conversations with other people who differ from them. I've gotten to the point now where I... I me and one of my coworkers completely disagree on on majority topics. There's not many that we agree when it comes to political or social issues or environmental issues. And he, I'll let him still like tell me what he thinks, but I've gotten to the point where I'm not going to tell you what I think because there's no point in... It's not going anywhere. It, yeah. If I say something, then it automatically comes back to, well, no, there's this conspiracy theory. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but what about this? What about that? And then it doesn't go anywhere. And it's like, okay. And I'm a very debative person. I like to debate a lot, but I've gotten to the point where I don't care anymore. Is it very red versus blue or for you, Zach? Very device, like everything is red and blue at this point? For for me personally? Like your people you talk to or that you see? Oh, not my day-to-day -day life. I, I find that most of these people are online. I find, ah, you know what? Let me correct this. Most of the younger people I know tend to fall into either a full red or a full blue yelling match if the topic's ever broached. Most older people seem to have different opinions on different topics. Why do you think that is? You're you're of the younger generation. I am a few weeks older than you. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to generalize too much. This isn't all the people I'm just saying in terms of the people I know in my life, the younger they are, the angrier they are about this stuff. And the more likely they are to a not have a conversation about the thing they're angry about. And so they just want to yell about how you're wrong <laughs> or about how, even if you agree with them, how everyone else is wrong, they want to yell about. It's just like waste my time completely. Or B, yes, the internet seems to have had an influence and that they think that the way people act online is the way people act in life. But as you get out of college and you start to experience life, it tends to, you tend to get more perspective. Well, that's part of maturing too. I mean, that's growing, yeah. you know, getting more life experience, seeing that there are uh, things aren't as simple. It's not as black and white as on a textbook. You know, when you experience things, you say, oh, okay, I can see more of why that person thinks that way. I do know a lot of older people. Unfortunately, I know more older people than you probably. So I would say there's a lot of that in my generation as well and the generation above mine. There Maybe older th people are just better about not talking about it. There might be. But I mean, you know, you can pop on the Internet and see somebody's angry face about something, right? There's always somebody mad about something. They're usually not 12. <laughs> there are grown ass adults saying really, really horrible things in the Internet because apparently it's OK to say something's horrible if it's just – launched at a Republican or a Democrat, which is why I say it's it's kind of the new racism in a way. It's the new brutal way to attack someone and you think you don't have any consequences for it. And that's what it's become. It's all over the place. It's it's a hideous place that we live in. It's a scary, scary place. It's usually online, I agree. But I've seen it in everyday life too. Yeah, I have to say that I've seen it quite a bit in, in everyday life as well. But I also work in an area that is more vocal about their opinions than you might expect in the older generations, which is kind of surprising. But when it comes to the younger generations, I think that they are more argumentative and less, they have less ability to actually have a conversation and debate like you would expect an adult to. And part of that I attribute to obviously the internet and Ch younger kids, I shouldn't say children, but younger people having grown up with the ability to always have information at the palm of their hands and learn the facts. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen a lot more of them who are arguing that's not the truth. You're giving out false information that you're just blindly making up as you go. And also not to say that they are listening because I don't think that they are having a real conversation. They're being too argumentative about it rather than having the conversation. But those younger generations weren't taught to have a conversation. Those younger generations were taught, you believe what your parents believe. You grow up and you respect what your parents have to say. And that's also a lot of times you can't disagree with your parents because then it's then it's an issue that you aren't listening to your parents, whether that's on religion or the way, you know, just your, the way your family establishes things is often how those younger generations were taught to be themselves. And so when they start to grow out of being children and become adults, then they, in response, when they have an issue arise, they're angry and they're frustrated because all their lives they've been put into a box of how they're supposed to be and act and feel. And now they're able to be out of that box and they don't really know how to handle it. That's uh, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I have no idea if that, you know, I haven't done any social well, so I've, sociology I've studies at, on it. I've but. looked at some studies on it and it's really it, there is some truth to there's a there's a specific age discrepancy that the younger generation tends to favor, tends to feel more self-righteous in many ways, I guess. But I, I don't think there's anything concrete. I mean, it's, too it's, early. it's all done from polling and it's all a matter of that day. And I don't, I don't trust polling. <laughs> I don't think anybody should anymore. The reason I don't trust polling is because people are at a point for the last at least several years where I, I firmly believe they don't want to say the truth of what they believe because they're afraid of being attacked. Whether that's, whether that's reasonable or not, they feel like they're going to be attacked. I, I really... I hate to, br I don't want to bring his name up because you bring up his name and people have a trigger reaction. But you talk about Trump, there are people that legitimately support Trump, but will never tell you they support Trump. Because if they mention, you know, like they might have in the beginning and they were just attacked. And to this day, they're still attacked. Nobody will hear them out. Nobody, you, know, you can, I've seen this a hundred times in the last year 
let alone since, you know, his whole reign started or whatever, his name comes up. And if somebody says they support him, no one that isn't a Trump supporter will listen to anything they have to say about why they support him. They don't care because they hate him. The vitriol is so strong that they won't even hear what that person is saying, why they support him, why they believe he's doing whatever he's doing. And on the same token, to flip it, if they happen to be against Trump, the Trump supporter won't listen to any reason why they don't support him. They don't want to listen to anything they have to say. Nobody listens to anything because they are so in their line in the sand is drawn and nobody's willing to even take a, 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 a little tiny pinky toe, a little tiny pinky toe and just like bend it over that line. Just just a little and bit so you can hear. I would say that we've say. really started to see that, too, when Obama was running for presidency. I would argue it started with W, honestly. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's well, I guess. Okay, yeah. So it started when it with George W. Bush. But when it got to the point where no, it was already very divisive, because it was definitely after 9-11, where you couldn't even have the conversation anymore. And so I put it around and this is just just my own timeline around 06, 08 is really when it started to get pretty bad. And so by the time Obama kind of shifted in, it was the same reaction that Trump had. It was against Obama. If you were for Obama, then you were a terrible person. And then it continued into his second term. Even to now, if you say that you you liked one thing about Obama, then it's <laughs> you're this horrible person and his kids should have been raped. And I remember seeing signs like that in Chicago. And so it's both sides have been continuously doing this back and forth attack on each other because of who their political candidate is, even if they're not. And that's on either side, whichever yeah, yeah. side you're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what side you're on. But it started back in like 06, 08. And so back to the statistics where you said you looked up some stuff and, you know. I did, but there's nothing concrete. So I couldn't like Because throw it it's on the too show. soon. There's not, there's nothing, there's not enough time for there to be any sort of legitimate statistical evidence as to whatever the trend may be and why that may be caused. No, but no. Because we've you, only had like 10 years. That, that's a long time to get That's it. not. And when you talk it's statistics, sample. it's very, very minute. But what I found when I looked it up is because everybody seems to already have an opinion, you can find a poll to support whatever your position mm-hmm. is. It's it's out there. Confirm- I gar- confirmation I bias. Whatever your Whatever your opinion is. You're for the wall, you're against the wall, you're for the kneeling, you're against the kneeling, you're for whatever this week's issue is or you're against this week's issue. There is a poll to support you. There is a poll to support the other, the opposing side. There, There is nothing that you can say is concrete because it feels like there is no what, – what's the word where you remove yourself completely from, from the situation? Were you, neutral? Nah, neutral? Unbiased? Unbiased. Uh, that's fair. An outside observer? I don't know. Yeah. There's no There's no neutral viewpoint. There's no, you know, unobstructive viewpoint. There's some unbiased is a, is a good one. There's, there's a there. word. Yeah. There, there's many words. But impartial? <laughs> impartial. Impartial. That's what that's I want. What it, yeah. Where you been? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, there's no real impartial pull because it feels like they're all each one of them has their own minor agenda. Well, they're skewed. And there's so many of them. You're right. About clickbaity. There's so many clickbaity agenda ones. It's just, it's just insane. One last thing before I stop talking, because I've written an entire book. Zach with my... fell asleep. He literally <laughs> fell, You heard that. He just fell asleep. He just woke up. He was napping. Yeah. Every day when I wake up, I yell, impartial. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, you were bound to get it right where it was going to be beneficial. Mm-hmm. But with the arguments that we have now with between people, when it comes to facts and research, people are only finding the information that is related to what they already believe. Agreed, hundred no, percent. It's and that is one hundred. Not everybody, but a, majority. A, a, a I, lot yeah, of people. I know. I'm a lot of people. There is there is a lot of people, and that just goes back to the confirmation bias theory, which is what I was just saying to you a little bit ago. Is that literally is what it is? People are finding the information, and they're like, "Oh, this art aligns with my already Supports believed my argument." Yeah, so this is what I'm going to use, and people don't even look beyond that. Now I'm fine if you. <laughs> If you're arguing a legal statute and you send me the statute, that's a fact. <laughs> if you send me an article from The Guardian, that's not a fact. That is a, that's an opinion piece. Unless it contains facts with references, that's when it becomes a fact. So there's a difference. I can't tell you how many times I've had a conversation with somebody and I say, well, here's here's what I think. 
And there are times where I do believe you should have a line in the sand when it concerns facts. You know, mm-hmm. when, when there's certain things, climate change, there are facts, there are there's science behind it. So you go and you present, hey, here's the science here, go look it up, da 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 da. And when someone says, no, that's wrong, and here, and sends you a link to a USA Today article that doesn't, or not USA Today, that's not fair because they, they do do a lot of Wikipedia. Research. Yeah. Oh, God, don't get me started on Wikipedia. <laughs> we'll send you something like, <sighs> I, I don't even know what's a, what's a good one. The Telegraph or or the Daily Mail or something. You know, just the Inquirer. I don't know, but just give me give me more than that, right? To substantiate what you're saying, give me something that has a link to a reference of a fact. Give me a fact. I love facts. Facts are what opinions should be, should be made of, not what I feel. It should always always be facts. And if you send me a fact, that's that's how you edge someone or you should be able to edge someone. I just don't think many people are, are willing. So when I had... Didn't you just say one I, thing? I know, I know, I it's know. Zach's but then you, turn. It's you brought Zach's something turn. up and I was going to tell right. you, I'll make it short and not speak. Go ahead and go back to sleep, Zach. It's fine. <laughs> so, you remember, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember how I said there's a, a new, my local news station posts all of these things that are just made to be controversial. Well, they posted one because Illinois had done something to um, strengthen gun laws. They didn't remove anything. They just strengthened gun laws. There's a 72-hour waiting period. And I had put a comment on there, which I stopped doing for the longest time, and I regretted immediately when I did this. And I, all I did was just a comment for my, you know on the, the main thread, and I just said, you know, this could be beneficial because – a vast majority of the suicides that are that people die by suicide come from guns. Mm-hmm. They that is the method that they use. Okay. Now, obviously, we have no idea if they had you know the time period of how long they waited to get the gun, but there is st- statistics behind it that if you can reduce their ability to get a weapon, then that already after the first like I think it's twenty four to forty eight hours. Somebody is yelling at the radio already. Uh, right, they, right. They just threw their iPhone. Yeah. And those things are but it'll, expensive. It'll lessen the likelihood that they will die by suicide. Mm-hmm. And somebody was like, there was like four people who had their opinions. Some were agreeing with me and some weren't. And then one guy was like, um, I don't believe this, Amanda. I need your statistics. I want your, where does this information come from? And I was like, well, let me route you to. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I gave him the actual, first I gave him the site where, where somebody had posted their actual research. Mm-hmm. Um, then I gave him the CDC. And then I gave him the actual article or the actual um, research and if you know how if you know how to read research, it's very lengthy when you get those articles, and it's very painful to go through sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I gave him all of these, and I explained, it and I said, if you're not familiar with how to read research, this is kind of what it says, blah blah blah. And at that point, he still was like, "That's not true." <laughs> I gave you the CDC, who is I've given you AFSP, who I mean, is I don't trust the government. Suicide prevention yeah. research. Yeah. yeah. I've given and all it was was just he wanted to he didn't believe that there was I think it's like 51 percent of suicides come from guns. Was his name Fox Mulder? (laughs) (laughs) Were there do you think there were aliens were behind it? Uh, that would be interesting. I'd be like, hi, how are you? It would be all right. So Zach, just so you get an opportunity to speak this episode, um, do you believe we're at the point where people are actually just numb in general to politics? Is that why not enough people really vote anymore? Is that a problem. Well, Aaron, thank you for uh, asking. <laughs> the You're welcome. Uh, well, obviously people are numb to it, right? Because I feel like people are, are talking about it more and more, yelling about it more and more. So, no, I think this is going to keep going. There's something there. There is going to be a breaking point for all the shouting. I don't know what it is yet. I don't think anyone does. There's got to be there's something's going to have to give eventually. Because this riding the partisan line and shouting at each other is not going to get anything done. Oh, no, it's it's not. And I I 100% agree with Amanda. It did start long before Trump. I mean, it's mm-hmm. great that no, everybody did. thinks that it started like because he came along. No, that came long before him. I remember it for years and years and years. It was just getting continuously worse. And then every time one party got a win, the other party made it louder. And then the, mm-hmm. that party got a win. The other party made it louder, and it just continuously, continuously. Uh, it it took a sharp elevation with Trump during I, his whole run. I don't think at so. At least man. anecdotally, I don't think so. I, I really believe. I mean, it, it did grow, 
But I also I think the articles grew, the, the coverage grew. Yeah. They just started covering everything he's every crazy or mundane thing he said. I mean, he could say, "Hey, I just left the bathroom," and there was an article about it. You know, where I don't think that happened with Obama. So I, th- it just generally escalated. I think I think it's continuously moving in the peak formation where we've been climbing up a mountain. Trump came along, gave it a little bump, but it's still, I mean, I still think we're heading up the mountain. I don't think we've hit that yet. I don't think we've hit the point where we go over the top, where we crested. I think we would go over the top if Hillary Clinton ran again and she got elected. Cause, <laughs> my God, I, both both parties just don't seem to like I her. mean, how many times do you have to lose before? <laughs> how many times do people have to tell you we don't like you before you finally have to admit <laughs> You're not likable. I mean, at some point, you just gotta say, you know what? I gave it my best shot. I'm good. I'm good. Let's Although, some... actually, I mean, she won. She won the popular vote. She she's uh the second strongest argument ever for why the electoral college is outdated and nece- and unnecessary. That's very possible. But at that this point, it's still illegal. So until that actually changes, and believe it or not, both parties have had the opportunity to change that if they really wanted to. Oh yes. All it takes is you winning, but then you've already won. So all of a sudden, you like the system. Yeah, exactly. But it you has. have to you have to win using the system and then tear down the system, and nobody's going to do that. You know what's funny is I've heard the argument against the electoral college for at least a decade. You know, with Gore and and uh, then then with Hillary, but both part Obama he had the potential to get that passed through Congress and sign it, no problem. Trump had the chan- the chance, which makes sense why he wouldn't do it. But he had the opportunity to. Well, he so, doesn't know what it is. <laughs> but, that's Zach's opinion. But you have. <laughs> no, that's probably the facts. <laughs> but you have you've had ample opportunity. Both parties have had to change it, and they opted not to change it. There's a reason why they keep it in place, and there is a sense of there is a sense of fairness because it would be totally based on just the majority of the population wherever that's concentrated. So you're not giving any vote to rural areas and that sort of thing. Right, exactly. There's pluses and minuses to both sides of it. But but winning the popular vote doesn't mean anything. Never has. Preposterous. (laughs) Well, (laughs) To win by three million human beings and not have a count. I'm just saying nobody can bitch about that. Nobody who's, you know, party specific, like I'm mad Hillary didn't get office or I'm mad that Gore didn't get office. You can't be mad about that because your party had the, the opportunity to change that. So you have to accept the fact it happened, and that's what your party wanted. They could have changed that if they really, really wanted to. And then it wouldn't have been a factor. You can be mad if you don't align with one party. You can be mad all you want, but the facts are the facts, and the facts are they chose not to do anything with it. I know. They chose to let it stand, just just... like they chose to give themselves raises every year. (laughs) I'm just saying. I'm going to run for president Okay. just so I can destroy the Electoral College. (laughs) That's going to be my campaign. <laughs> That's your one issue. We're like, where do you stand on yeah. abortion? Don't care. This, this is going down. This is the most important issue facing our country <laughs> today is the Electoral College. Really? What is it, Zach? I can't explain it, but I'm against it. What it's about bad. homelessness, Zach? No, no, no. Let's not worry about that right now. We have the Electoral College that we need to figure out right now and remove. Well, I'm trying to make sure that that homeless person's vote counts. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's sad? Somebody would make the argument, well, why don't you let the homeless people go to that college for free? Get it? Well, the Electoral College. college. I got it. Yeah, yeah, Jokes yeah. are funnier when they're funny. Free college <laughs> is really funny, Aaron. <laughs> so my story illustrates a common problem in my eyes, that everybody is so righteous and opinionated, they failed to listen to any one side of anything. It's all just an excuse to, to yell opinions. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Why do you think we're at the point? where people aren't truly discussing these things anymore. Zach here, you love to be philosophical. Why do you think we've arrived? Amanda science, he's philosophy. That's where I'm going. Okay. Plus Amanda's exhausted her time for the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you feel we as a culture just have stopped having opinion or like discussing things, having real conversations? I feel I definitely think I've said this before on Smirk, but I think it really it comes down to people like to feel good about themselves. And if they get to shout into an echo chamber about how terrible someone else is or how right they are, they get a bunch of people who applaud them and give them a like on Facebook and shout about it. You tell a brother. So I think it comes down to selfishness, basically. I, it comes down to I don't think these people 
do not truly believe in the causes, but they do truly believe in feeling superior to other people. Mm. It is not important to them that the death penalty be abolished, but it is important to them that everyone knows how good a person they are. Interesting. Amanda, you can speak. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're giving you your chip back. Thank you. I don't think I necessarily agree with that, though. You don't have to. That's the point of the show. <laughs> now he should yell at you until you agree with him or you just hang up. Build that wall. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Zach doesn't necessarily believe that people are innately good and have good intentions, right? Well, you're making assumptions. That's, That's why I said right. Okay. That's a okay. question. Easy, easy. Don't yell at me. Right? Do I think that people are inherently good? Back or, before. Or that they're not. I think people are inherently selfish. Okay, so that's exactly, I think that's Jesus. exactly why you feel the way you do. What? You're like an upbeat guy, you know that? <laughs> Just pep, uh, little, so much pep in your step. People are capable of good and people are capable of bad, but people more than anything are capable of self-serving action. There's definitely truth to that. But when it comes to people aligning and defending things, causes that they believe in, I don't think that necessarily they would have been so strongly hellbent on defending them years ago if it weren't for the internet for them to find ways to defend their argument but now that everybody is kind of picking something to care about and aligning their political social physical movements and agenda behind whatever their cause may be their life behind that we're seeing People who genuinely do care, people who are going out and trying to take action by doing marches or by doing protests, things mm. that are peaceful. And if they didn't care about that genuinely, I think they'd probably just be lazy and sit at home and watch Netflix because let's be real, Netflix has some good shows out right now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there's too many to keep up with. And now Hulu's on the track too. So there's but there's other things that they could be doing, but instead uh, they're whoa, they're going out. You love that. You left out DC Universe, obviously. Oh, so, so sorry. So my apologies. And now no, Disney World. I'm okay with it. You can leave it out. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that people are inherently good until something deters them from that track. And so if would, people would are- Would they still be inherently good then if it wasn't, if it just they, takes something I to think people them? are born with an inherent goodness. I think their, env oh. their environment shapes them on how they become as people later on. Hmm. Anyway. I think Batman was right, and the world only makes sense if you force it to. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, because we all should live according to That sounds to like Batman communism logic. or something. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what Hitler decided on. Whoa. Oh, okay. boy. Hey, that's whoa, that's, whoa, that's, that's a little too... Slow it down. <laughs> break that, bring that back a little bit. People, I think they can they can make good decisions. While they may want to have people like them for their decisions... I think they're making them because they do care about that cause for whatever reason. I blame clickbait culture. Well, that too. I blame clickbait. I mean, from people as well. You, you, we live in an age where you can comment, you can have an opinion on anything. Your opinion is heard by everyone as long as you post it and you have likes and things like that to encourage you. So it's, it's the same as clickbait culture. It's encouraging you to throw in your opinion because you know someone will appreciate it, someone will argue with it, someone will, you know, you'll get a reaction, you'll have attention, you'll get something out of that statement. It's the same as clickbait articles. They just want you to, they just want you to click on it. They just want you to know they're there. They want you to entice you enough to pay attention to them. And that's what's happening. You've got people all over the internet that finally have a place where they can say their voice without actually having to stand in somebody's face and say the things that they want to say. And then they can walk away. But they also get affirmation for their beliefs. They they can get negativity and then other people will come to their defense. I mean, it, they really feel like they have an important voice in the world because of that and culture. With with the internet, there are so many tools to silence voices you don't want to hear. So it becomes all too easy to you know say something that ignites a conversation. And then as soon as anybody challenges on you, you just block them. And you never have to hear about it from them again. And now it's, now it's as if no one had ever had that other opinion. Mm -hmm. I think it's good that people have their own opinions and that they voice them. I just think they need to be backed by legitimate research or information and not just, not no, we, just we get their that, feeling. But, but people aren't doing that. That's the problem. I get that. But the bigger question is, why do people feel the need? What is so wrong with 
the people in our society, in our culture, in our world, primarily America, because the rest of the country doesn't seem to be this. Uh, I don't think it's just America. I think we're the worst of it, Ooh. for sure. No, I think the, I think the UK is the worst, but <laughs> that's fine. Well, OK. Difference of opinion. I'm that's just, fine. Yeah, I'm just saying, no, people always like to say it's always worse where they are. I just don't think there are other countries with problems, too. Well, and regardless, everybody has the issue and people are having this everywhere, regardless Mm -hmm. of the level. The bigger question is, why do people in our world, what is going on that's making them feel the need to get attention and affirmation and a sense of belonging that is so wrong in their personal life that they have to resort to the Internet? What can we do to resolve that issue, the initial problem, which is people aren't feeling like they have had a voice, they're not feeling like they've been appreciated, that they have to result, they have to, their life comes to this. Celebrity I mean, culture. Uh, there's a great documentary series I think you would like on Netflix called Black Mirror. Yeah, really <laughs> <can do it. laughs> uh, I've seen it before, yeah. Touche. Well, we'll come back to that. That is a bigger question, but I think we've already run, this is quite a quite a bit for I'm a season sorry. premiere. No, yeah. no, that's that's a good question. My answer would be celebrity culture, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody, but that's a everybody does want to be a star. Mm-hmm. They and do. We do. We want to be stars. So you want Smirk to be yeah. huge, right? You but want people to listen why? to it. Why? What is it that's driving people? That I that's want their... a fancy car. I want a beautiful person that doesn't care about me at my side. I want money, and I want a pool. So it's really just chasing what Hollywood represents, even though it's not, not just Hollywood. A- I think it's just, I mean, look at even politicians. They're getting rich, filthy rich. The people that are supposed to be, that's not what they were supposed to be doing <laughs> with that job. No. And they're getting rich off it. And that's not what well, it's there wasn't. There was never supposed to be anything like a career politician. No, they put these things in place when they, you know, were 50. When people lived till they were 50. Now people live till they're 80. <laughs> it becomes a full lifetime appointment. That's just... And not just the Supreme Court. I mean, Congress. And you end up people just vote for the names they know, so they just keep getting reelected and stuff. But it was never meant to be a, a job that you got rich at. It was supposed to be public servant. That's what your your job is supposed to be, and it's not anymore. People look up to them as if they are celebrities or they are important in some way. They're not. They work for us, <laughs> but we. Have it, that whole thing just completely flipped around where we we think of them in the same way that the UK looks at Queen Elizabeth. They are the key, the queen, the prince, the, you know, all that sort of. It's not a democracy once you get to that point. Once you stop remembering that they work for us. When you allow them to become your celebrity. <laughs> exactly. That's where I think it is. But that, like I said, that's a much longer topic. And Smart's usually a lot more. Just more jokes, <laughs> uh, not so much uh, insight. But this is one that I, I really wanted. To, I wanted to talk about all season last year, and I figure if you're going to kick a season off, why not get something? Why not piss everyone off? Maybe somebody will fill our comments with stuff. You know, that's really what I'm going for. I'm whoring it out. So the story was it truth or fiction? What do you think? And I should preface this if because this might be some people's first time ever checking out Smirk because it's season two. Each week we tell the story to prompt the conversation and get it moving along. Some weeks, there are true stories where the names have been changed to protect the parties involved. Other times, the story is a work of fiction used to push the conversation on a certain topic forward. So, every week we find out if the story was true or false, and sometimes it's a fun surprise. Or triction. No, that's not a thing. (laughs) You have to go listen to the entire first season to understand what that means. No, I'll sum it up for you. Sometimes there are stories that are true and a little bit false. So they become triction. And Zach and I both voted and we said, no, it's not No, a Zach voted with me. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Zach? I can't recall. You know what? I don't have an opinion. Exactly. <laughs> Mando. Dang it. Do you think my story was truth or fiction? Truth. Okay, Zach, do you think my story was truth or fiction? Truth. No, it was fiction. Oh. 100%. Oh, man, it. I thought you were Grego. Well, my, my nickname would have been Arano or something like that. A-A-Ron. Yeah. A-A-Ron. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> Edible. You done messed up. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it every day, I think, every day. You know, which is, which is funny. For most of my life, nobody had the name Aaron, and it, nobody even mentioned it. Other than it was the, uh, I don't know, it was a biblical, the brother of Moses, I think. Other than that, nobody knew who Aaron was. Now, suddenly, everybody is an aficionado of Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so. What's the title of your fancy story that is not true and not your real life? <laughs> It's the ballot is stronger than the bullet. Mm-hmm. Do you know what that means? Mm. You know I'm what? hoping because start. of Lincoln getting shot in the head. 
Oh my God. Bullet. <laughs> you know what? John Wilkes Booth, unsung hero of history. Who agrees? <laughs> wow. No one. Um, nobody. Nobody. Oh, sorry. But- Ooh, tough crowd. Tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but it is actually an Abraham Lincoln quote. It's ironic. Oh, good. It's ironic, isn't it? I like him. Yeah, but you were thinking of him getting <laughs> shot in the head. So I don't really know. No, I'm just saying, like, it's. <laughs> I be- love that one part in the movie when he got shot in the head. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I did. Nope. Thorough presentation and research paper on Lincoln. But I thought you were going to say something because, like, it's better to use, cast your vote to make change rather than, like, use physical action to make change yeah. or something. Yeah. That's essentially, yeah. yeah. That's what Boom. I mean. That's literally what it means. So I got it right. <laughs> you did, but you were because you were thinking saw- of him getting shot in the head. And I'm actually, but it's, it's, yeah. he said it. Same thing. It's just ironic that he said it. Yeah. I'm he got sorry. a bullet. To the night <laughs> <laughs> okay well as our show goes we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on smirk if you'd like a chance to have yours read you can email it to my story at smirkpodcast.com join the conversation oh please give us a review if you like the show listen to the other episodes there's a lot of variety so a lot of them are funny some of them are funnier some of them are more serious you never know and then give us a review on itunes especially uh, apple podcasts i think as it's known google Pod- whatever you listen to please give us a review really really helps the show we're starting season two we would like to build momentum we have an announcement we'll get to in a second we're still working on it Sick. so join the conversation by joining our facebook group which is smirk or follow us on twitter at smirk podcast and use the show's hashtag smirk and don't miss an episode come back every week our website is smirkpodcast.com by the way now zach what's the announcement hmm. we have an announcement well you're right Didn't we announce this at the season finale last night? No, episode? we announced that we would have an announcement. Yeah. We haven't oh, actually man. announced anything <laughs> of what we were working Boy. on. Why don't we figure out when we're going to release this before we make well, an announcement? It's a pre... It's a... We're do- we did an announcement for a pre-announcement for a regular we announcement? Have to get, we have to give people something. <laughs> we're, how about we're Teaser working? trailer. There you go. What are we working on, Zach? What are we working on finishing? A book. Huh? Working on a book. What's the book going to contain? I thought we... I thought we said this. It's going to contain our stories, not listener stories due to, you know, legal, legal shenanigans. But it'll have all of our stories from season one bound up into a book for you to peruse with your hand. You get that new book smell. Mm -hmm. Wrapped in fine Corinthian leather. That sounds expensive. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a special edition (laughs) of leather bound, let us know. We'll We'll have to do that one. Yeah, we'll have to do that on like a separate occasion. I wanted to uh, do a little bit like Necronomicon and bound it in human flesh. Aaron shot me down. But if we can get the groundswell going for it, guys, I think we can make it happen. If you're willing to donate. <laughs> donate yeah. at Patreon.com. <laughs> yeah. If you're willing to like do a little scraping and send it in, I think maybe we can make that work. I but think we should not. We'll probably instead if, give your sample to the police. If you have an amputation coming up, if you want to give us uh, donate that leg our way. <laughs> get Dude, out. what would you do if you got a leg in the mail? <laughs> I'd have to bound a book in it. I would have to figure out how they got my address. Shouldn't that be your first question, Zach? Really? That's your first no. question. How did they if, get my address? If a human leg shows up in my apartment, <laughs> I assume they did the research. But how? How'd they find it? I don't it? care. At that point, I just... I, you don't have to worry about them showing up because you'd know them right on site. Hey, <laughs> you're the guy. <laughs> no, I'm not. You only got one peg leg. Yeah, you are. You just offended one-legged people everywhere. Oh, uh, you know. No, just that guy. I'm How not calling everybody with one leg that. I see that that one particular guy, <laughs> the one guy who mailed his leg to my apartment. Yeah, it's a very. I'm gonna small, call him peg leg. <laughs> a very small audience, very yeah. tiny, very tiny. Okay, guys. Well, as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Can you offend? I'm smirking some- right now. You're smirking right now, like the second. Oh, yeah. Can you offend yeah. somebody that sends you a a body part? I mean, I think you can. Their feelings might be hurt. They went through the work their of chopping off hurt. their leg <laughs> to Can you to offend you. somebody with one leg considering they're only three-fourths human? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me know how hell works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>